In this episode of the Zach and Jay Show, we spend 48 hours with one of the world's best esport teams to find out just what it takes to become a professional gamer. You've never played. It is on, man! Oh no! The X and J Show! Gaming. A world that started in 1958 with the first video game has now gone on to become a $131 billion industry. Gamers were notoriously thought of people who never saw daylight and stayed in their mum's basement. But in 2020, gamers are some of the most well-renowned athletes in the world. Yes, you heard us right, athletes. Sold out stadiums worldwide, prize money of over 100 million euros and almost 500 million streaming hours watched per month. What does it take to become one? Well, with the help of Mercedes-Benz, it was our job to find out. In 2019, Mercedes-Benz became the first vehicle manufacturer to invest in an esports team. That team was SK Gaming. SK is one of the top gaming teams on the planet a pioneer in the esports world with some of the best facilities and support for their players. Although SK have several esports teams, we'd be getting involved with the League of Legends team. Regarded as the top game in the esports world, it's been running for 11 years and keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mercedes-Benz has partnered with the creator of League, Riot Games, and is now the exclusive automotive partner of three global events, the Mid-Season Invitational, the Worlds, and the All-Star event. The world is currently going on in Shanghai. Unfortunately, the SK gaming team were knocked out, but as a result, they've given up some time in their busy off-season schedules to show us how to get some proper esports skills. So with that, we set off to Cologne, blissfully unaware of the crazy world we're about to step into, but feeling honored and definitely not too excited about the fact we were working with Mercedes-Benz. <clears throat> We just landed in Cologne and to address the elephant in the room, we're in the most gorgeous car on the face of this planet. Now how did we get a Mercedes-Benz brand deal, Jamie? Real recognised real, yeah? <laughs> and these German cars, they represent enterprise, they represent craftsmanship, and they represent quality. I think why we're super excited and why this is going to be a great bid is the fact that I don't have a clue about this gaming industry, like, it, it, it is exploded in popularity, money, infrastructure, teams, like, whole SK gaming team sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, like, one of the first moves in the industry like that. We don't have a clue, and we are very much going to take you guys on the journey with us while we just learn about this mad world. Morning! Day one, we're in Col, not Cologne, that's in France. Uh, it's still Cologne. Do you we're, say it Cologne? We're British. We are here today at the magnificent Magenta facility, home of the SK Gaming Assassins. Hey, we've got a very busy day today. We're meeting the team, we're meeting the players, we're meeting the coaches, and we're being put for our paces. And we get to finally learn how to play League of Legends. Not Over a 100 million people play every single month. I don't even know what it looks like, to be honest. Just flames and just wizards flying around. I'm very intrigued to, you know, dive into that world. As one of the world's top eSport facilities, Magenta comes fully equipped with... Personal chef. Uh -huh. Dining room. Massage chairs. Patio garden. Lounge. Easy boys. Gymnasium. Weights. And of course, state-of-the-art gaming computers. Yes, the Magenta facility has everything you can wish for to be one of the world's top esports athletes. Just ask the CEO. Hey, get the f out already. So after already being really impressed by the facility, Jay and I were eager to find out what it takes to become an esports athlete. Enter Crownshot. Crownshot is one of the top players of League of Legends in the world. We were lucky enough to sit down with Crown Shot and find out how the hell a kid from Slovenia who played League of Legends for fun has turned it into a life of crazed fans, huge prize money, and also how much pressure comes with being at the top of the gaming world. Crown Shot, Crowny. 
the man. I've done a bit of RuneScape from seven till 12. Played <laughs> Call of Duty for like four years. I, I was like really into Grand Theft Auto, motocross games. Since we've stopped gaming, like the whole world's just like continued like growing, growing, growing. When did you first start playing? Yeah, I mean, I've like... been playing the same game for like 10 years. Really? So I was playing some tournaments in my country at the start and competing with like friends and against like people from the same country. And I was still in high school and I was going to like tournaments in France. I told my parents I, I don't want to go to uni because this is like what I want to do and they saw that the tournaments were like legit. It was like arenas and stuff. The stadiums changed the game man. When I see the people at the stadiums going crazy yeah, I'm like yeah. wow this is, yeah. this is big. Like the first like big tournament I played at was like two three thousand person arena and the whole stage was shaking and I was, really? Like, I really, I was really nervous because it was like my first big tournament. Yeah, one sec man, what, what's this? We're now indoors on a sofa because a man tried cutting down some trees. You were, you were 17 when you turned pro. It's like when you first started, right, just for fun, you're probably not good enough to even think about turning yeah. pro. And then you start getting really good. And then suddenly it starts becoming more and more realistic. Yeah. And then suddenly like contracts in front of you and you're like 18 years old, still at school and, and you've got a full salary. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was kind of surreal, you know. There's just so much pressure from all yeah. angles. Like you got the 14 year olds coming yeah, up yeah. to like. Yeah. And if I'm being honest, like I couldn't see myself doing anything else right, like right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's like, uh, I really enjoy it. Like even though obviously it's stressful and you have to like sacrifice a lot of time and stuff. Yeah. Obviously like doing as long as possible is like the goal. Uh. We chatted for over an hour with Crownshot. And the one thing that was clear was this just wasn't a game. The pressure that is on these athletes to stay at a high level is unreal. With short lived careers and limited spots in the teams, we wonder What's next? A man who had done just that is Jesse Lee, who's the head coach of SK's League of Legends team and an industry legend in his own right. Jesse has retired from playing League of Legends at the ripe old age of 24. Yep, you heard that right. We're in the lovely massage chairs. We're about to speak to ex-professional gamer because he is now retired and is the team coach of SK Gaming. Activate the TPs and activate it. Watch out! Hey, Whoa, hey, Jesse! Oh, yes. Magic. So Jesse, how would you describe your role here? Some coaches try to teach the game and some coaches try to just be more of a lifestyle coach. I feel like I can also bring a lot of my ex-pro player experience in and how to win. When did it start to become real to you that like this was going to be a job, a career? Like, I think just my first year. My first real team uh, was actually SK. That was all the way back in 2014. Right. But I was always the type of player that always wanted to enable my teammates and make them look good. Yeah. And that also meant that if I wanted to win really badly, uh, I would always go out of my way to teach my teammates and try to coach them as much as possible. So stepping into the coaching role was supernatural. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you ever feel like turning like what was initially a hobby into like a profession would take the fun out of it? Oh, definitely. It's like while you're passionate about the job itself, I'm just not passionate about playing the same game over and over again, Yeah. honestly. Uh, which benefits me, because now I'm not playing, now I'm just yeah, yeah. coaching, which is fantastic. If you were to describe League of Legends to two, two right. idiots yeah. who don't have a clue. No, no, no. You've two, never two. played? Oh, no, no, we, 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 we. we. <laughs> well, there's five players on each team. There's also different champions in the game where each player gets to choose one champion. Um, and then it's basically five champions versus each other. And then it's about going against each other and killing each other to get gold, to become stronger. The more, the stronger you are, the easier it is to destroy the enemy space, basically. So what, what do we need to know now in terms of getting on there and just figuring it out? Just play. Yeah, Jesse, why am I being time pressured to pick a champion right now? Well, I don't know. People are waiting. I want to play. An assassin has got short bursts of aggressive attack. Mages inflict a lot of uh, damage, however, they can't take in a lot of damage. Where are uh, you getting quite this from? Good. I watched a six minute video on YouTube, bro. Are me and Jay on the same team? Yeah, so this is your uh, team up there. We're going to get battered, man. Okay. I've got this guy on my team. And how do I cast a spell, Jesse? Because I keep right clicking people. Ah! Again, it locks in the card that is on. Me. I've, been, I've been slain. Jesse, how do I use no, my health no, potion? No. Right, how do I lock on my right, camera? Where are they? This is too confusing. And it's, uh, stun oh card. my god. I keep wasting bombs. Run. Yeah, man, look at me. I'm on smoke. And how do I avoid getting slain? Because I, I see a pattern emerging here that I just keep getting slain. So you need to keep your distance, like social distancing. See, is there any sort it. of comparison on how mine doing I'm... versus Zach at this early stage? Well, I think you're doing approximately 10 times better. Woo! You're joking. Did... I hate to say it, Jesse, but I think I'm seriously addicted already. Yeah. <laughs> what is good traits of a gamer? Just 
having good basics, uh, just being very solid all around, like knowing how to use your spells when and where and... Jesse, and would you say I've got good basics? No. Oh, ah. I don't know about you, Jay, but after all that being great at basics, like Jesse said, I'm in need of a workout. Yeah, you were really good at basics there, Zach. Ah. Oh. Oh. We've now got a fitness session with the, the legend that is Benjamin. This man was the fitness coach for the German national team in 2014 as they won the World Cup and is now the fitness coach for SK Gaming. But what does physical fitness have to do with gaming? Well, we were about to find out what things that gamers have to do to stay in shape physically, prevent injuries and keep performing at a high level for longer. If something normally feels is painful, I'll just stop doing it. Hand eye coordination, right? Do is throw the ball to each other, catch it and the, the last letter you see before you catch it, you just say it. Ah. Oh. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Too late, it's belly leg. And then I say a color, and then who's faster grabs the color. Okay. Head. Belly. Head. Blue. <laughs> ah. Benjamin, I'm exhausted. Yeah, you should be. Should it's, be. it's those ropes, man. They look so easy when everyone's doing them. <laughs> For me, it's very interesting to see how it transfers from football to esports when people think maybe it's not that associated with physical activity. We try to find um, exercises that are um, yeah, connected to what they're doing on the screen. Things we did with the hand eye coordination. And as a gamer, there's also some certain like, injuries or things that can happen. Over the time, you get overuse, like you yeah, get elbow yeah. issues, shoulder issues. So we also have to work with them in terms of um, yeah, trying to avoid that, right? And also how can we paint or show a picture to the kids out there and, and showing them, okay, look, these guys, yes, they're professional gamers, but they're also working out, they're um, eating healthy. So it's two things that we're doing at the same time, making them better in their performance, but also like trying to create a, a role model. What has been the highlight of your career to this day? Well, it's uh, pretty obvious, I think. So we won the World Cup. Uh, I was with them for eight years in total. So to 10, I started and yeah. to 18, I quit. So after 90 minutes, um, our captain at that time, Philip Lam, he came there and, and he said to them like with, with a lot of passion and he's a really quiet guy normally. And he kind of said like, I, I know we're going to win that. But he didn't say that in a way where I've got goosebumps. But there was so much confidence in him saying that was yeah, giving me goosebumps every time I think about it. I love it. The importance of the physical aspects when gaming at such a high level is no surprise when you consider League of Legends has over 100 million people all gunning to be the best. Where reaction times are so key, when there's millions of euros in prize money on the line, it's no wonder teams are squeezing everything they can out of the players to gain tiny bits of advantage by working with some of the best in the sporting world. But it's not just about training the individuals to be as good as they can be. League of Legends is a team strategy game, so these players need to know how to work together too. Next up, we spoke to a man who knows just how to do that. Joe Alawasi, SK's general manager, showed us that the passion and commitment to make it in the industry and the need to win isn't just coming from the players. What, what is your role at SK? Like, what, what do you do day to day, week to week? So I'm the general manager, so league ops, transfers, scouting players. So we're the final say on which players come in and out of the team. I've heard today there was two quite promising prospects downstairs earlier playing. Uh, what? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! I actually ran away from home to pursue this. Really? Yeah. yeah. When I was 17, I left school. I did this when the industry wasn't like paying full-time salaries, you know, like even if the whole industry collapsed, I would still do it. The, the greatest people in like any sport or competitive environment are the people who are like obsessive. Like I literally go to bed thinking about my teams and my players, you know, like if you don't love what you're doing, you're not actually going to be the best because there's going to be someone who's going to find a way to be better than you. Hundreds of thousands of people who want our job, you know, we are blessed, you know, in some way to to be in this position as well, so it also kind of keeps you motivated. And, and for our jobs, it's quite it's quite mad that like these jobs didn't even really exist or not in the way they do now, like 10, 20 years ago, it's, it's, it's mental. So with day one over, I felt like we had demystified the previous image we had in our heads about gamers. These people lived strict, scheduled lifestyles and the pressure they were under is immense. 
Everyone from the players, coach, managers, personal trainers and chef are all gearing these guys up to win at every cost. Sorry about that, just admiring the car. Day two, we are back at an SK Gaming facility and we are chatting to a sports psychologist and we're going head to head in the League of Legends. Leggings? What's Leggings? League, League of, of Legends, Legends Championships. Jay and I, who's going to win? I don't know. Shit, out of fuck. Come on. So before we could finally settle who was the biggest legend on the channel, we talked to Mia Stelberg, one of the world's leading sports psychologists who's worked with the Finnish Olympic team before working in the esports world for the last five years. We were going to learn about how these players deal with the mental stress that comes with competition, big expectations and success at a young age. So I think one general thing that you need to understand about gaming is that we are talking about top sport when we go into the absolute top level of gaming. When you are in, in one of the best teams in the world, your life is very much similar as it would be if you would be a footballer or an ice hockey player or something like that. You have several hours of practice, physical training, mental training, the team meetings, and you have the nutritionist. It's very, very demanding. I imagine at first when gaming was a hobby for them, that was kind of their escape or that was the things that they enjoy. But when there's so much pressure, you almost need something to escape from that and do something else from that. So how much do you kind of work around that or look at that? But SK is, is a good example of an organization who is really responsible in that sense that this is their first job that they're actually having. So we need to be very um, aware of, of their well-being and make sure that they're in a good place. But generally, if we're looking at gaming, I would have to say uh, that 50 to 70 percent of the outcome of any kind of game comes from mental factors. Your ability to focus or your very good self-image or your ability to come back from uh, disappointments. The people who are watching this are hedging their bets. Who's going to win? What should we be thinking about to take home the dub? Well, well I'd say it's, it's more than just a competition. Last week, actually, we were at a race day when we were driving a car on track and I, I won. He came fourth out of six people. I came last because I can't drive. <laughs> anyway, so see, he's still, still bitter. <laughs> he's fourth, Mia. He came yeah, fourth. The only battle that, we, that matters is between him and I, right? One, one good tip is to be very confident. So if, if your confidence is there, it's, it's obviously going to affect how you approach the game and how you see the situation. And then how do we save our relationship after one of us <laughs> mobs salt in the other one's room? I would advise you to stop having these duels because you're obviously building a momentum every week. Well, I'm sorry, Mia. We are rejecting your 20 years of experience and running full power in the name of competition. We've experienced the world of esports from the ground up. And although our basics may be lacking, we were doing this for glory. Who would be slain and who would gain the glory? Gain the glory. So, after some last bits of training from our mentors, yeah, you like, just focus on learning how to move. Just like dash in and just murk in, mate. You'll probably die. There was only one thing for it. We needed to answer the question that literally nobody asked Who's the pro gamer? Who's the top champion? Who's SK Gaming's new recruit? Probably. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear you. How do I get the camera to follow me? How do you buy? Where, where are they gone? Yeah, where are my coins at? They're literally... Game on, baby! Coming into battle, baby. Oh my god, it is on, baby! Shit. No! Yes! What, you want some? You want some? Tell her you're gonna die. Oh shit, I actually am. Oh no! No! I'm strong. I'm stronger than you. Yeah, seen a bit, lad. Seen a bit. Yep, yeah, seen a bit. Yeah, strategy, lad. The tower's getting battered. I'm literally so into this. It's hurting my chest. Come on, boys. Come on. We go again. The last attack. Come on, lads, he's running away, we've got him. Oh, he's backing away. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah. Yeah, he's in the corner. Come on, boys. Yeah. yeah. SK Gaming, your king is here. I think maybe it was more to us than it was to anyone else. <laughs> Stay humble. Anyone can do this. You work hard, you're innovative, and you can achieve anything. League of Legends is mine. I look forward to my career in SK Gaming.
Cause if you don't like it, chase me So they don't bother Sunny I got I don't got my hands on the ball Maradona Walkers born to come SK Gaming, thank you so much for having us the past 48 hours. The entrance to your world has been incredible. Mercedes-Benz, thank you so much for all making it happen and uh, for giving us the best car in the world. We'll see you in four weeks. See you in four weeks. More like made in Ealing. When I used to get beatings, not screaming, help me. I said, Strelly goes in and they say I'm that guy like Wellesley. So I think I wanted to pipe back in the day and it's spicy more like Melby. What a shame she should have ate healthy. Plenty more fish in the sea.